Hello, Linux fans. Welcome to Episode 2 of Destination Linux. Tagline, Dolphins are cool. I'm Rob. And I'm Rocco. And today we've got a special guest with us, Dolphin Oracle, one of the developers of MX16 Linux. He'll be spending some time with our latest release. And along with that, we have some Linux news to discuss. And we're also going to get into what Rocco is going to do about his daily driver. <laughs> that along with viewer questions and more on this episode of Destination Linux. Rocco, how are you, man? Merry Christmas. I'm doing good. Merry Christmas to you. Thank are you, you ready? I guess I'm ready. I've done all my shopping on Amazon and gotten that all out of the way. And uh, you know what I'm worried about, though? I'm kind of worried. I haven't been exactly super nice this year. I've been a little on the naughty side, so I'm worried that I'm going to wake up with either coal or copies of Windows 10 in my stocking. Oh, my other. gosh. Which is worse? Oh, let's see here. I can burn the coal. Well, I could burn the copies of Windows 10. <laughs> you could burn the copies of Windows 10. <laughs> So what about you? Are you all ready? I am ready, man. I'm ready in here, so that's all that matters. The rest is just details, so we're good. Absolutely. Well, and let me get I'm the ready for right now. Well, let me get the official countdown. Hold on, one second. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is. While you're uh, doing that, I'm going to set up Santa Tracker. Two days, five hours, and fifty-one minutes until Christmas. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So he's getting the reindeer prime right now. That's right. <laughs> so. So you know what else I'm ready for? What are you ready for? I'm ready for some Linux news. What you got? Linux news? I got some Linux news, Rob. All oh, right, so um, we have Budgie has updated their desktop 10.2.9, and it really, it's just a, a minor bug fixes, but it does come with fixes for HIDPI uh, and some panel and Raven fixes. So, hey, anytime they're going to continue updating it you know they could have just you know done nothing and waited for the next one to come out but uh, it's always good to see them update it yep always anytime there's improvements being made and you see that there's activity that just keeps interest yep speaking of updating uh, or upgrading maybe uh, <laughs> Linux Mint 18.1 uh, put on their blog that uh, you can now upgrade from Linux Mint 18.18 to 18.1 so basically, all you have to do is open the update manager, go to edit, and there'll be a, an extra menu there to say upgrade to Linux Mint 18.1 Serena. So that makes it easy. Wait, that hold makes on. it easy. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, I wonder, I'm curious how many people just go ahead and, and uh, make their upgrade that way. Personally, I probably would try it once, but. I always lean to the side of just doing a fresh install, even though it's a pain. But uh, what's your thoughts there? Well, as far as Linux Mint, they they in previous versions didn't have the, the they didn't have the upgrade pretty much uh, perfected. So I can't speak for this version, but I would agree in past versions I would definitely install it from fresh rather than upgrade. And they ha say in the blog too, upgrade for a reason. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So there if you're you go. okay with Linux Mint 18, then you probably shouldn't upgrade. So There you go. All right, so we have Ubuntu 17.04 to use the swap files instead of swap partitions. So do you hmm. use a swap partition? Well, currently I do not. So uh, I had read some time back that if you have an SSD drive, uh, that it just wasn't healthy for the drive to have a swap partition. Plus, with the current system that, that I use now with 8 gigs of RAM and everything, I just bypass the swap file or swap partition altogether. But uh, this is interesting what they're doing uh, from a technical side. I wonder how that all works. That'll be something to kind of dig into. Yep, yeah, it'll definitely be something to look out for. Um, I currently have a swap file, but it never gets used. So I think in the next install, it's going to be gone. There you go. And I haven't noticed any ill effect from not having a swap file. I don't expect that I ever will see any ill effect. And for me, if there is that slightest possibility that's going to affect my SSD drive at some point, and that kind of makes sense if you're constantly writing, you know, back and forth yep. to the drive. So well, how much memory do you have? This particular drive is 120 gig. 
uh, in space, but I've got eight gigs of RAM, if right. that's what you were asking. Yeah, so with eight gigs of RAM, yeah. So okay. I'd love to have 100, 120 gigs of uh, <laughs> 128 gigs of memory. <laughs> <laughs> Probably never use that, but okay. <laughs> Okay, so next up we have Canonical patches 15 Linux kernel, kernel vulnerabilities in all the supported Ubuntu OSS, OSs. Jeez, I can't even talk today. Um, <laughs> so basically they patched all of them, Xubuntu, Kubuntu, all of their uh, distros, all the supported operating systems to fix security issues. And, you know, I believe this includes the latest security problem with uh, where if you were running a video game emulator that it could compromise the system. So, you know, I don't know. If you want to jump through that many hoops. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, someone will. Someone will install the emulator just to prove out that there was a vulnerability there. <laughs> it's, not wide, sure. it's not as widespread as you would think. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> That's right. You know, we've got it pretty good in the Linux community. I mean, yeah, we've, we've had our share of vulnerabilities and security risk this year, but nothing in comparison to what Windows is continually facing. And I think uh, it's like you said the other day we were chatting, uh, you know, when it's bad enough that you have to spend 30 minutes reading through the updates to figure out if you want to do the updates on a Windows machine, Yep. That's pretty bad. You spend more time on a Windows 10 machine trying to figure out if you should actually update it. That's if you care. Uh, but if you <laughs> care about it, I mean, you're going to spend more time on a Windows 10 machine doing it than you are on a Linux machine nowadays. It's, it's, it's a That's sad right. state of affairs for a Windows user. That's right. For a Windows user. So. All right. So <clears throat> that's it for the news, Rob. What do we got over at DistroWatch? Oh, boy, over at DistroWatch. Well, there's always something new at DistroWatch. So just in case anyone was interested, the number <laughs> one ranked distribution on DistroWatch is Linux Mint. Can you believe it? Wow. It's that static page coming <laughs> through again. That's right. I think they have something wrong with their HTML code, and Mint is just locked into the number one ranking, and they can't do anything about it, perhaps. I'm but, wondering uh, <laughs> if anybody has ever seen it where Mint isn't at the top. <laughs> Can we go back that well, far? Well, yeah, we, <laughs> we pick on Mint, but no, nah, there's more to it. There have been some new releases. So the Alpine Linux project, which is an independent Linux distribution, uh, it's developed with an embedded system and security in mind. They've released Alpine Linux 3.5.0. Uh, this release switches the distribution from using an open SSL security library to a Libre SSL security library. They also introduced support for ZFSS as the root file system, and they've upgraded many of the packages. Now, this is a distribution I haven't personally checked out, uh, but if you've got interest there, uh, now may be a good time to kind of dig in to see what they're doing new. Uh, also, we have a new release of Neth Server, so it's a server-related distro. They've got a snapshot release here, which is bringing them to version 7.3, release candidate 3. And uh, this distribution is based on CentOS or CentOS. So um, they go on to say that they're increasing the flexibility for administrators. So if you are into servers, you may want to check this out. And then also we've got uh, Xtix, which is uh, they've announced a re new release, a new version here. It's a Debian and Ubuntu based uh, distribution. And they're at version 17.0, and they're shipping with the KDE desktop environment. And it will be available in 64-bit only, so no 32-bit. And I got to tell you, you know, we, we're starting to see more and more releases that are 64-bit only. And I think they're leaving out a large part of their audience in doing that. What are your thoughts, Rocco? Well, I think there's a lot of older machines still out there that rely on distributions that allow them to put 32 bit on and i you know i personally don't have a, a 32 bit machine but you're kind of shrinking your base as far as who would try the distribution if you don't support 32 bit i don't think we're quite there yet where you can cut it out i really don't either because we've got to look at linux as a you know it's used worldwide we right. can't just look and say, well, hey, here in the U.S., we're all running 64-bit architect. Well, that's that's fine, but we've got to look at the rest of the world where, you know, that simply may not be the case. So 
I, I agree with you. I think uh, we're just not there yet. So, and then some uh, some some more release news here for those who uh, are not faint of heart. Manjaro has an Alpha One release of version seventeen point oh. So uh, maybe that's what you should jump into, Rocco. What do you think? Are you crazy, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> Manjaro 17 Alpha is not for the faint of heart. Just saying. <laughs> I, I was, I mean, yeah. I was crazy for accepting the distro challenge, but not that crazy. <laughs> there you go. And that's it for Distro Watch. So, Rob, we have a special guest today. Who is it? Yes, yes, we do. The one and only Dolphin Oracle. Uh, he has agreed to join us on episode two of Destination Linux. And so we're going to have a chat here with uh, Dolphin pertaining to their MX-16 hot off the press or hot in the press MX-16 Linux distribution. So we'd like to welcome Dolphin, one of the developers of MX-16 to the show. Dolphin, how you doing? Well, pretty good, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me on your show. Absolutely. We, uh, we couldn't resist after we saw the uh, reviews from uh, uh, English Bob and Sudo Reboot. Yeah, uh, particularly Sudo was quite enthusiastic. Uh, I, I got to give the guy props. He's he's been cheerleading the last few days. If you watch his watch his live feeds, he's uh, game stuff on uh, on top of MX Linux. So I'm I'm tickled to see that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I actually installed uh, MX16 two nights ago, so I have to say that I was pretty impressed. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. It was uh, we. It's it's sixteen was built on top of MX15, MX16. Real realistically, both based on De Debian stable. So in in a sense, sixteen is just a natural continuation of fifteen, and it's got a lot of. Um, well, we've had really almost two years of of fooling around with fifteen, uh, and you know, inevitably in the world of putting together your own distro, as soon as it's out the door there's like 18,000 things you want to change or fix uh, that you didn't know until, you know, you can do all the beta testing you want to do, but until, uh, honestly, until a thing gets distro watch and all the distro hoppers out there grab onto it, you really don't know what the debug tweaks are, the tweaks you need until until that mass of people hits it. We don't know, have any idea what you're talking about, man. Yeah. No, I, you guys <laughs> don't, what, don't hop at all. What is this distro hopper thing you speak yeah. of? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, it's... Uh, so anyway, so 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 fifteen in the past. Let me back up. In the past, MX has been ba has been considered by DistroWatch as a subset of Annex of Antics. And so we've had a several. We've had two releases. We had fourteen actually. We had fourteen had a couple of point releases. Fourteen two, fourteen three were kind of bug fix releases. Fourteen four brought the XFCE. Um, what we have 4.12, 412, to which isn't in Debbie and Jesse. Debbie and Jesse is still 1410. Uh, we brought that to MX14. And so 15 was based on that. 16 is, is using that as well. And I, don't know, I kind of forgot where I was going with that. With, with, with that well, let me, well, that brings me to one of my questions is I, that's the first Debian based distro that I've installed. And I hear all of these people actually uh, don't call don't call me Lenny made a video of how easy it was to install the graphics drivers. Well, to be honest with you, I didn't even notice the difference as installing a Debian intro, uh, a Debian distro for the first time because it was so easy to install the drivers through MX sixteen. <laughs> so that's I don't know fantastic. How, I didn't know. I don't know how hard it is to install it on Debian, but all I know is I went in, I clicked the. Uh, install the graphics drivers the terminal came up i entered my password and it did everything i needed to do and i rebooted it and i was on the nvidia drivers well i'm that that's great you know that was a very late add to to the system we were using a tool called and we still are it's still available on the distro called smxi it's written by a guy named who goes by h2 i don't know his actual name but he's been uh he used to be part of the citix project or seduction, I guess, project. And he, uh, uh, the Antics developers reached out to him and he modified it so it worked with Antics, being both Debian. Now, Antics tries to roll with uh, 
what you call it, Debian testing uh, more hand. But a couple years ago, we had a push from the users in the Annex forums. I said, Let's have a stable version, please. And when and when Jesse came out stable, we they took the opportunity to do that. Um, so it, so H2, what that tool does with SMXI and the subset of that um, SGFXI, I think it is, that tool actually downloads the source code from, from NVIDIA mm -hmm. and compiles it and runs it. But th th there's advantages and disadvantages. One, you get the absolute latest driver that way. But it doesn't... Um, um, uh, uh, it doesn't install it in the Debian way, so you don't get the packages in the package um, uh, in the package managers. They don't show up anywhere. They're just installed. They're just it's just like installing from source. So that's literally what it is. So Lenny uh, said, "You know, come on, guys, fix something here." I mean, I mean we were in RC one, man. I mean, we were ready to. We thought we were done, and he he comes in and says, "You know, this needs to be easier because this is really ridiculous." It's like, okay, so actually we, we forked, um, it's not obvious from the tool, except if, if the guy who looks at it, who, who wrote it, happens to look at it. We actually forked the solid, the solid XK tool, which was written for Debian stable and Debian backports repos. That did not work real well with the way our repos are set up, so we actually had to... Uh, redo a bunch of code on the inside and make it work with our tools. We actually wrote our own in NVIDIA detect tool to, to figure out which NVIDIA driver to install because we host all that stuff in our repo. Uh, so there's none of this going out into the, you, you don't have to enable Jesse backports or anything like that, which if you follow the Debian wikis, you do. And we also learned something about why. We couldn't figure out why it was so hard to install, why everybody was having trouble on Debian distributions. We found out why. Debian proper Debian like the big dog Debian configures its app get system so that it installs the recommended packages ah automatically most of your Debian based distros including MX and Annex is no exception they don't because it, it has the potential to pull in all sorts of things so uh, their wiki doesn't tell you to install things because it assumes that it's Debian and it installs all the recommends are going to happen so the, the wiki, the Debian wiki, is not quite complete, depending on how the app get system is, the package, man, the package management system is configured on the individual distro. We figured all that out, rewrote the, D, it's called DDM uh, from Solid XK, the back end is anyway. And, um, and uh, we, we, we rewrote a bunch of that, so it just used our repo, and then it brought in the, the names of the packages and all that stuff that was, that was particular to us. NVIDIA and Debian don't help because their their detect tools, or actually the, the guys who wrote NVIDIA Detect and Debian, assume that the only place the drivers are available is the Debian stable repo or Jesse backports or the backports repo. So if you have a newer version, say I think 340, I think is in. If you have, I think ours is three three six seven, and we just we just brought over the three seven fives. It's in our test repo. Um, <laughs> it, it doesn't know where to get them. It, you, you, it right. tells you it tells you to go Jesse backwards, but it doesn't know where to it doesn't know where to grab them. So anyway, Lenny was huge in that part uh, because we we actually delayed release for about two weeks trying to put wow. that back together. Um, well, because it was just kind of a big deal, and also you know as we still have the ATI FGL RX driver that Ubuntu doesn't have because they. Uh, uh, you know that support's been dropped out of out of the mainline Ubuntu's. Um, it still works in Debian Jesse, so we we host our own for that as well. It's how not many, just Nvidia. How many people do you have involved on the development side? Because there are twenty four official dev team members. Uh, about actually about twenty of those are active on a daily basis, and we also have a uh, translation team. That I'll be honest, I don't know how many of them there are, but we're translated in about 12, 13 languages our own tools, and those guys are great. Uh, it's run by a guy named Ol Giza. He's the project manager on that, and he, uh, we, in fact, I just sent him two tools to, to do update translations on this morning, and hopefully that'll probably hit sometime tonight. It'll be up on TransFX. Um, if you've seen, if you happen to watch my thank you video, I w really went into the translators, because those guys, I mean, I know coding is gobbledygook to a lot of people, but, you know, I don't speak anything, but America, you know, so <laughs> I, I had so much respect for those guys. Uh, and then we have a project manager, Jerry, 
3904 on the forums. He actually wanted to be here with me today, but um, uh, unfortunately, family considerations. Uh, sure. Something on the order of all of his grandchildren not able to uh, leave him alone while he's on the microphone. So, <laughs> he, he hey, we're down to earth here. We would have, we would have been okay with that. Yeah. Now, actually, the main developer of 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 MX, the lead developer, we call him. You know, title. If you look at our about page, all these guys are on there. Uh, he's actually the same lead developer for Antics, so we're tight. It's not just that we're spun off. Oops, my screensaver kicked in. I should have disabled that. Uh, the it's not just that we're based off Annex. It's that uh, we're actually pretty tight with Annex. So our our live USB system, all that stuff comes from Annex, and those guys are tweaking it right along as we developed as we, as we were getting MX16 out the door. Well, I installed it this morning on a an old piece of hardware that I even I forgot I had. It was a uh, an ASUS uh, transformer type. Uh, laptop. Oh yeah, yeah. With the had the pin and everything, and so I was concerned from a driver standpoint with the older hardware Core Two Duo. You know, with this touch screen that everything completely out of the box worked. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, the pin worked. Everything. Wow. Well, yeah, I'm. So, all, we're always curious about the touch screen stuff because yep, we have a whole lot of people just testing touch screens. We got a couple. But 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 not a lot. That's that's interesting. That's good. That's good to hear. You ought to see the laptop I'm running this on right now. It literally, I had literally broke one of the hinges off the screen this morning, <laughs> uh, getting it out of the box. Uh, so I'm I've got it like like propped up on my desk here, taped together, trying to hold it together till we get through this through this podcast. <laughs> well, if, if you like, if it's helpful at all, I can shoot you the exact model of the uh, ASUS just so you know from a touch screen touchscreen perspective you know what it is yeah send it send, uh, send, send it send it to me we'll uh we'll throw it up in a wiki in our wiki is something we know that works <laughs> all right very good that's fantastic so what do you think well from you yet I, I hear you might do some reviews absolutely yep from time to time uh rocco twists my arm on a review every now and then it says hey you must do <laughs> I this i would never twist your arm <laughs> so, well <laughs> And, and that was my purpose. So I installed it in boxes for the first time. Um, and so messed around with it a little there and immediately knew that I needed to get that on hardware and really put it through its paces and go through some of your MX tools. And um, so, uh, yes, a, a review will be coming. And <laughs> I want to spend time with the hardware and, and really dig in so that I there's a lot there. I mean, there's so much more there than your typical distro yeah I, uh, we i don't know we put a lot of work into it it is it is not easy being debian stable and yet having some of the newer stuff in there as well we we have i mean our repo is its own backport repo in the sense if you want to consider it that way we're not just grabbing packages from from upstream and hosting them we're actually in most cases we're actually recompiling them and repackaging them in hmm. some cases we're providing some tweaks and and tricks um uh, sneak preview. We're we're working on a Compton manager at the moment. Nice, um, nice. Because a lot of folks are saying, "Hey, we're getting screen tearing on these Intel graphics drivers." Now, personally, I don't have a big problem with it, but a lot of people do. So we got we got together one night. I said, "Well, the LXQT guys have have a configuration tool." I'm like, okay. I said, "We got Compton in the in the repository. Fine, let's get something put together." So we're right. We're we're kind of wrapping it all up in one spot. And a lot of our MX tools you mentioned are actually written in Qt. So it was kind of a natural fit to be able to drag over uh, some stuff from the LXQT project. Yeah, we'll see. Well, it's it's we're, we we haven't even released it for testing yet. So we'll see how it goes there. Well, but no, that's and that's part of what I want to dig into before I get into the review because I want to be able to speak to what these tools are exactly, how they work, what they do, um, from a new user perspective or someone trying to set up Linux. And depends on the hardware, of course. Uh, for the first time, I mean, I just see that as being huge. Yeah. Well, we we focus a lot on the setup. Uh, one thing I don't know if you what's what's your chipset for your wireless. Um, well, on my, on this system, um, uh, I'll have to go back and take a look at it just to yeah. see. Um, I haven't used this hardware in so long. I just don't recall. I got you there. The reason I ask is we're actually, um, and you, you'll notice, uh, Lenny talked about it. We, we attempt to pre-configure the correct driver for 
your Broadcom wireless chip at the very first boot of the live media. You don't have to do anything to do it. By default, it actually uses the proprietary uh, W, so-called WL driver, the Broadcom-STA right. whatever for the you Monharo guys. Um, they the the so so for most of the time that that part works fine now the, the, the occasionally you find a tool where it doesn't a part where it doesn't so we have a list of those tools or the list of those parts and we actually queue that we query that on your very first boot and on the very first boot it will say okay this is on our list let's switch it to one of the open source drivers and we switch it to the open source driver we and we do all the appropriate blacklisting and everything uh, ahead of time and if you know where to look you can look at that stuff and see it done Put a check file in slash Etsy so that it doesn't have to do that again. Awesome. Uh, it only does it once. So, and uh, that has been working pretty good. Uh, in 15, we actually had some parts that were left out. And actually, I, honestly, the Debian wiki and the WL wiki or the, the Linux wireless wikis that we looked at, the, the, the pages, said that certain parts would work with WL and they just don't. So we've actually we've actually tweaked it back so that it, it's back to using the open source drivers for those parts, even though upstream says they should work. I, don't know. I would. So we have a lot less complaints this go around than we did with with 15 and with Annex 16. We had a couple of complaints with Annex 16. It, it actually uses the same tool, and then uh, and then back to MX 16. So far, we haven't had a single one. Uh, you know, knock on wood. Uh, well, I had the same experience as Lenny, where uh, the Broadcom drivers were installed without me having to use the tool. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, the Broadcom manager's there if you have to tweak something by hand, and it's it's also it's you know you can do it the way the, the wikis tell you, editing files and such. But it's um uh we we try to spend a lot of time making these drivers work, and that's one reason I'm glad to see the the two video driver tools in here because that we were lacking those to be honest. Uh, it, it make it easy, and that's that's one thing the MX tries to do is make setup easy. Well, I also want to hand it to your artist within the group because it's also very attractive well, and, uh, <laughs> you know, the th and it's consistent, you know, the theming and everything is consistent throughout. And so you just get the feel that it's a polished OS, you know, at first boot because well, of that. Thank you. I, I appreciate the, you know, the art team doesn't get enough credit sometimes. Uh, the art, and we do have an art team, uh, the, the art project manager, um, uh, I am going to. It's a it's a username. I'm going to completely butcher it. Asquerth, um, <laughs> uh, really took the right bull by the horns. They were she was uh, new this year, uh, this 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 dev cycle, and she really took the bull by the horns and kept everything solid. Now we've got a couple of things um, theme wise with dark themes. You probably know what I'm talking about. Things like Firefox, right? With 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 the YouTube thing. Um, there's, there's a couple other tools. We're actually getting ready to do release a, uh, an update to our default lit tool that will include one more tweak for hex chat because hex okay. chat has the same problem. We didn't catch it in, in development, but, um, so yeah. So if you look at our MX, if you look at MX default look, which is on our welcome screen too, it has a couple of just quick and dirties where you can flip the panel horizontal, um, which isn't as easy as it sounds because the, when you get into the XFCE settings, it's easy to do with their tool, but with the way our panel's configured, if you just flip it to horizontal, everything's mirrored. It's backwards, and, it's, and uh, it's, that's not even strictly speaking true. So there's a lot of logic, and hopefully it works for people. I don't know. Anyway, it flips, and then we also have the Firefox tweak that forces a different theme on the internals of Firefox so that all those little text box fields work because that's annoying when people want to find Run With The Dolphin and can't type his name into the channel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually, I actually watched your video on that, which was helpful because, as you said, within Firefox, it can get tricky. And uh, so you were going through in the video showing, hey, I'm typing, but you don't see anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 the one thing about about MX guys, a couple of the guys are myself included, but I haven't contributed much on that front, but a couple of the guys are trying to contribute some of this information back onto the Mozilla, to the Mozilla bug tracking system. So we've had some success with that back with 15 when we were working on the uh, media playback, uh, back when things were shipped back to HTML5 and Firefox's compatibility wasn't all there. We actually were going back and forth with Mozilla guys saying, hey, how do we get this fixed? And we do the same thing with XXCE. Uh, Toz, T-O-Z, I guess that's how you say his name. 
it's weird. You live in the Linux world, and it's all online, and you don't know how anything's pronounced. That's right. Uh, don't get me started about we know Facebook. We know how to pronounce every name here at Destination Linux. <laughs> I, I bet you do. <laughs> Probably have a whole team of people working on pronunciation. <laughs> so, um, what are the pros and cons to using Debian for an end user? Well, that's a fair question. Okay, so Debian doesn't change much. Okay, and when they say stable, they kind of mean it. Uh, they 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 release the thing, and except for security fixes, that's it. You don't get it. I mean, you, I mean, if you enable the Jesse backports repo, they even tell you that you'll break. You might break your system someday doing this. You know. Oh my gosh. Uh, because they're not as vetted as much as their main repo. That's. I mean, you consider Debian test. We all talk about Debian testing. Oh, it's a dist. You know, you, you see the, the 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 Debian distros based distros that are based on Debian testing. You're like, oh, we're based on Debian testing. We have more up to date packages. That thing changes a lot. Okay, and testing doesn't change as much as SID, and unstable. <laughs> But stable to the to the user out there that looks to Ubuntu LTS or something like that. That's where the Debian stable guys. That's where you really want to be. If you don't, if if you were a Windows user and you ran Windows XP for twelve years through multiple releases of Windows, I bet you didn't upgrade Microsoft Office one time through that entire mess because it costs money, right? But us, we, us Linux open source guys, we always want, it's all free, so we want the That's latest right. time it comes down. <laughs> Well, as soon as you had to pay money for it, all of a sudden people run XP for 20 years, right? Yep, that's right. <laughs> okay, so if you're that mentality where you just want it on your computer and it doesn't, it just works forever, that's where Debian Stable is going to do you good. Now, obviously, in the desktop world, Linux is a tiny piece, right? In, in servers where stability counts for even more, Debian's actually got a pretty sizable share. Um, and Debian is a true free foundation based group uh, that doesn't have a billionaire backing it. Like right. Some heroes I can mention, which I a have. And a committee to go along with it? Yeah. You know, uh, well, you know, it, well, the, 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 the foundation committee for Debian can be fun and interesting. The, some, the IRC channels can be exciting uh, <laughs> on occasion. Around election time. Um, but I but, noticed that you have, you know, later, the latest packages on certain things, like you have the latest Firefox. Is that from your repos? Yes, that is from our repo. We bring the source from Mozilla, recompile it. It's got some tweaks for MX so that we don't have that annoying, you know, if you install it yourself from Mozilla's packages, you get this annoying little uh, update notice that you can't do anything with because it's it's upstream. Uh, usually that's, there's a whole other user. We modify that so that it, that message doesn't pop up. There's a few other things we change. Uh, but yes, it's hosted in our things. Same with I'm pretty sure it's the same deal with Thunderbird. I'm fairly certain Thunderbird is hosted on repos too. Um, of course, Debian now uses Firefox. In fact, if you install Ice Weasel, you actually get the uh, extended support release of Firefox, um, but uh, which that's available in the repo if somebody wants it. But uh, but it, our Firefox is our Firefox. It's in our repo, and uh, you know that's how we do it. We we, we went ahead and pulled in LibreOffice five this time too, which you won't find in um, Debian uh, stable. It's in Jesse uh, backports. It's in the backports repo, but it, uh, that gets to be a hassle for updates as, as things go. If you because the backports repo, I'm not gonna get into that. But let's just say even if you have the thing enabled, you're not quite done yet. Okay. Because they use special priority settings to keep it from wrecking people's system. Is the is the plan to kind of continually build on the repo and and add as you get request and? Yes. In fact, we have a package request forum a thread in our forums and i mean you'd be surprised how quick the package team gets together and pulls those packages together i mean it's one reason we have obs studio right one reason we have simple screen recorder um, um there's a whole host of things that we have in there that just aren't available elsewhere or that we have more up to date than other than, than debian than upstream uh, you know some things don't matter a whole lot um but some things do and that's what we like to have is the things that matter. Well, and those are the key things. Yeah. And, you know, as soon as I say this, you know, you'll have 10 people that raise their hand and say, what about 
you know, some obscure <laughs> software package that you've never heard of. I use that oh. all the time. <laughs> I think there's been four package requests this week so far, packages I didn't know what they were. Yeah. <laughs> but somebody's putting it together for him. You know, there's action. Somebody there's uses it. A this morning. So, you know, we'll throw it in our repo. You know, at one time, uh, at one time, we we were we were kind of hoping to make the claim that we have more backports than backports. <laughs> I don't think we're quite there yet, but we're 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 moving right along. Well, I got to ask you because really, for me, I was uh, kind of caught off guard to be uh, upfront about it with MX16. It's like one day, you know, I'm browsing the channels that I typically watch on YouTube, and all of a sudden, here is uh, to use English Bob's words the distro of 2016. <laughs> and I was like, okay, now how did, number one, how did I miss this? You know, that's, that's my first question, but you guys have got to have been, you know, number one, happy to see the response. And did it kind of hit you out of the blue? Was this a surprise to you that all of a sudden there's all this activity and, you know, okay. The level of activity. Yes. I mean, we were behind the scenes. We were making plans to, try to get people to review MX-16. <laughs> what can we do to get this on there? Now, one of the reasons why we've flown under the radar a little bit is that we have been, not by us, we've always considered ourselves a, a, a distro, uh, but DistroWatch uh, considered us a, you know, they have this policy. I don't know if a lot of people know this because you got to kind of read through the DistroWatch rules and submissions and stuff to know this. Um, just waking up one day and throwing a spin together and calling yourself a distro doesn't get you in dist listed to distro watch. There's a lot of stuff. Now there's some shortcuts. You can buy a banner ad for $400 or whatever it is. And damn, you're a distro. <laughs> I'm a distro watch, okay? I got no problem with that. That is Wait, a, wait, that is, is that how Linux Mint got? No, I'm just saying. Well, <laughs> Linux Mint is Linux Mint. Uh, what we did, we went the longer route, which is if you're active and going for two years, then they will spin you off into the thing. So, but we needed listed. So we we said, okay, we are a spin of antics. And so we got our announcements on DistroWatch under the antics moniker, uh, which did cause some hiccups because then you clicked on antics and you ended up getting all the antics pictures and stats instead of the MX. And then they started flipping it back and forth and it got complicated. Um, this year, they actually called us and they said, hey, you guys have been around for a while. You want a listing? And we said, now nah, we're okay. No, we said, yes, <laughs> list us. <of> <laughs> um, so, so, you know, we got listed at the, uh, I think our initial listing was something like 8,227, you know, down at the bottom. So far down, you can't even see it. I, this morning, I, th I think we're up in the 70s now because it, it's a, on the six month weighted average. So there's nothing like release day to help those numbers, you know. Right. So that's why we've been sure. under the radar is, is we just haven't been a lot of visibility. But, I cannot believe. Now, I've I've been following Steve, English Bob, for a long time. He's commented back and forth back when he went through an MX15, 14 phase back in the back in the day. Uh, and uh, and we went back and forth a lot on the YouTube channels. Um, and then Lenny got a hold of it, and he actually joined our forums, kind of, you know, he does this, just so you distro watchers out there know this. He joins your forum incognito. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, but he reviews your distro. He reviews your distro, okay? And uh, uh, so he started making helpful comments on on things, and now the guys are looking at it. And I just, I just, I can't believe the number of people that looked at it. We've also have a a online reviewer uh, who has taken an interest. I don't know how to say his name either. De Deddy, Deddy Modo. I butchered the name. But uh, there's a link on the MX Linux uh, distro watch page to one of his review older reviews. And um, uh, I, I, he actually interviewed us as well for his written blog uh, not too long ago. So, uh, yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, I'm happy. Uh, I think we got a great distro, uh, obviously. I've been running uh, Andix and or MX since 2008, you know, for Andix and, and, and MX since, the, since it started. Um, I was shocked and amazed. And I'm glad people are taking a look at it. So. Um obviously you've got some kind of uh, some form of way to track uh, downloads or something I'm guessing from the, or do you? Yes. Uh, uh, to a point uh, we can, we, our main site download site source forge, we can track that fairly easily. The torrents we can track fairly easily. Things to Linux tracker. Um, our mirror sites are less easy to track. Uh, 
Um, and then also there is a, there is a spattering of people trading their own torrents. The Distro Watch torrents we don't have. They're hosting us right now. We don't have uh, those numbers, although I imagine they'd provide them to us if we asked. Um, in our first week, we were something like uh, ten thousand. Uh, I don't know where we are right now, but it, we're 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 really getting the the bit torrents in particular are really impressive for Europe in in particular. I don't know. I don't know what it is about Poland. You guys love thirty two bit. Uh, I'm just, whatever. I'm I'm happy for you guys. <laughs> uh, uh, I think United the United States is almost um, almost two to one sixty four bit, uh, and then you get out into Europe. And it's and all of a sudden the 32-bit is very very popular, and I think that's something to think about for guys out there dropping 32-bit support. There's a lot of people still want it. That's exactly what I was going to say. Is uh, and you you know it immediately if you go into the forums, you'll you'll see people saying what no 32-bit, um, you know. So I think it was a good move on your part uh, to not follow that trend of dropping 32-bit. Now one thing we did do with our 32-bit release, and it's 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 not. Um, a lot of people don't realize this. There's really two different ways you can run 32-bit. You got to have the right. You got to have the right kernel. You got to have either a, a PAE or a non-PAE. A non-PAE will work all the time, but if you have more than four gigs of RAM, it's not going to do any good. We actually include both kernels on our 32-bit ISO. It takes it slightly longer to install Grub that way, but when you choose at boot which kernel you want to boot, in the very first boot menu, it's going to say P PAE or non-PAE. You choose that one to go, and when you do the install, it carries that over, and whatever you chose at boot, that's what you're going to get. Uh -huh. uh, so that is, and actually, I want to give a shout out to the Annex team. I have a very small part in the Annex Antix Dev team, very very tiny part, but except as an enthusiastic user, um, that live USB system that they have is out of this world. It, it, it really is. I almost ran, if I didn't have to run my work computer doing actual work stuff right now, I was actually going to run this 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 podcast, this interview off the live stick, uh, just because I have a live stick all set up ready for it. Uh, <laughs> I mentioned in my videos that I don't need, you know, a lot of times I do a video, I'll, I'll, do, a, I'll do the Kate, I'll do the editing, I'll do the, the capture, I'll do everything off the live USB, and nobody in YouTube land knows can tell the difference. You know, that's how good that live USB system is. And when you select the options or you install an app on the live USB and then run our installer, guess what shows up on your installed system is whatever app you had. Um, so there's a lot of neat tricks that the live USB system has. And if you think you're running live USB is slow, you haven't run it on a USB three with a USB three device. I'm telling you, we can outrun some spinning hard drives for sure. Maybe not SSDs, but we'll run outrun a spinning hard drive. You know, I saw your video on that as well, which I kind of st stepped back a minute because it's something I've never even thought about doing. Okay? Yeah. That, you know, it's yep. just, you know, and so when you laid it out like, nah, you can run this thing. <laughs> yeah. Here, here, here. This is why you might want to live. live this, <laughs> yeah. is, this is a Lenovo S21e. And I talk about this thing on the channel and I talk about it in the forums. It has a 16 gigabyte. I won't call it an SSD because I think it's actually eMMC RAM, flash the, RAM. This is the really cheap. Yeah, the really oh cheap. Oh my god, tool. this thing is this thing is. I mean, it's great because it's light and and all that stuff, and it has battery life is ridiculous on it. It's got one USB three port, and right there is what runs this computer. It's 120. It's 128 gig USB three, um, but it boots. I don't know, 12 seconds. Wow. Off the USB, and that's wow. with my customizations. Uh, only two gigs of RAM on that computer, and I use it for, you know, I, I use it for a lot of stuff. I don't use it for anything heavy duty because it just doesn't have the oomph, the power. But it's nice when you just need something you want to browse the web on your way to work or or whatever. It's 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 a nice it's a nice little device. Well, and but there it has a tiny tiny hard drive, and it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and there are places in the world where something like that would be super handy. You know, we take a lot for granted here in the U S as far as what we have laying around at our disposal and things like that. So. Oh, absolutely. And actually you, you, you the, the, uh, that's ant the antics projects. Primary focus is older machines. MX is not so much, but it, it, antics itself. I mean, antics still ships on a CD for that reason. CD sized <laughs> ISO, you know, people are like, Oh, that's quaint. Your CD size. Well, yeah, but if you leave off, you know, GNOME or KDE or or even SFCE, to be honest, 
um, you can still cram LibreOffice onto a onto a 700 meg download. You know, it ain't easy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what what do you see future wise? I mean, what do, where do you go from here? I guess. Well, it's funny you say that. We've already started talking about MX seventeen, uh, which will be stretch based uh, once Debian stretch goes to stable. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep making it better. Uh, uh, I, 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 you know, <laughs> we want to climb the distro watch chart. We want more people on our forums. Uh, it's it's really coming alive, you know. Unlike a lot of projects, we inherited our community. The community is older than the project, um, <laughs> a lot older than the project. Uh, uh, there was a you may have heard of it, Mepis. Okay, so so the community used to be called the Mepis community, and the Mepis community uh, ran simply Mepis. Simply Mepis was a commercial project, you know, like Seuss or or Red Hat. Uh, a guy uh, a guy named uh, Warren, yeah, his first name's Warren. Warren W. I forget his last name. Woodard, I think. He um, he was running Mepis LLC, and this was part of it. this was his product. He sold support. He sold all sorts of stuff for it. And if you were a subscriber, you got early releases and betas and stuff, and it was pretty cool. And then one day he just said, "You know what? I'm not making any money. This. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do something else." <laughs> and so he can't. He, he the Mepis name's his. Mepis LLC is still out there. He does patent something. I don't know. He's still out there. So the Mepis community was trying to decide what they actually, there's a, they're still supporting the, the last beta release of Mepis 12, which people ask me, how long are you going to support MX for? <laughs> as far as I can tell, we never stop. I, Mepis 12 is still being supported. We just quit supporting Mepis 8. That's how, wow. that's, and, and yes, that's 2008. Um, so that was kind of crazy. But uh, uh, so, so, Mepis, so, so the, the community said, well, we, let's get something put together. Uh, let's do something else. And a couple of the guys uh, started saying, "Well, let's KDE is too heavy for a lot of our computers. Let's let's try something with XSFE." And it kind of just started being a dream project. And then um, I believe Ant Anti uh, Anti from the Antics project uh, got with them and said, "You know what? Antics at once upon a time was actually based on Mepis, hmm. and that's where they got their original live system, uh, which I think actually is." sort of kind of related the Nopics, if you want to go along in the tooth. All that's different now, but that's how it was back then. And uh, and so they started building this this idea for an XFC-based distro. This is the primary reason why our panel is vertical, is because the original idea was going to be on a netbook, and not yep. a netbook like this thing, which, has, which at least has a real monitor. Those, 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 those half-size monitors from a few years ago, the 1024 by 600 monitors, there's no vertical space on those. So where do you do with the panel? You throw it off to the side. And so that's kind of where this started. And then we it just kind of became our look. So we kept it. 14 didn't have an option to swing it horizontal. 15 brought the option for horizontal. <laughs> because yeah. people were like, we love your distro, but we hate your panel. Well, and you, you run into that. You know, you take a look at uh, Unity, you know, for example. And people just don't like it when you're locked in a certain way, you yes. know. Yeah, how long has it taken them to, to make that panel switchable on Unity? Yeah. <laughs> we did it in a year. I don't know. You mean the most popular <laughs> distribution ever? <laughs> that's right. Well, you that, know, that's, that's why the Unity's why there's a Ubuntu Mate. That's all I'm saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, there's a lot of distros out there, and, you know, at some point as you start looking at the number of distributions and releases over a year's time frame, at some point the lines start to blur a little and things start to become, um, you know, kind of mono, if you will. And the first thing I noticed, uh, again, I, I loaded this first in boxes, but immediately you see that, no, this is different and it's not different, you know, as in, hey, we're going to put a pink wallpaper on here with a purple panel. It's different for uh, real world reasons with your tools, with your uh, theme tool, um, the live system that you've talked about. You know, this is the first time this year that I've had any type of discussion about, you know, running uh, a Linux OS in a live, in a true live environment like you described earlier. No, it's, it, it's, it's you know it, what's funny is we I did most of the most of the um, 
this go, this dev cycle, I was mostly involved in a couple of the MX tools, uh, building the MX tools. I did all that on the live USB. Uh, out of necessity on one trip because I could this I mentioned this computer is falling apart. Literally, I, I left. I forgot it. I for, I was on a business trip and I forgot the thing, so I had to use my work computer. Well, I can't install anything on my work computer. That's a no no. So hey, I got this live USB. Uh, let me try that. So I actually I actually ran most of the dev cycle just running live USB on the work computer. Crazy. That, I mean, it's 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 remarkable. People don't give it enough credit. Um, and I can take that thing out, pop it in another machine, and all my apps are there. KDN Live's there. Everything's there. We tried. You, you mentioned uh, things blurring together, and <laughs> that's one reason we've kept the vertical panel because at least it's different uh, for an XFC distro. Uh, you notice there's not a lot of text on our panel. It's mostly right. graphical, uh, you know, icons and such. Part of that's because it's vertical. Part of it's just because it's again, it's a, it's a market distinction. Um, our art team actually went out of their way. This is like the sixth icon set we vetted for this for for, for MX, because and there's a lot of and and the Fianza set's still available on the ISO, um, it, because we pull an icon set like oh Mint's using that one, or oh Monharo is using that one, or whatever. It's like we don't want that. We don't want to be the same. And so part of that's superficial, but part of it is it's your luck. People are you, you click on the on the homepage. That's what they see. Um, well, know, and, I, and it all comes together too, because, um, you know, it, it, if you lose focus in one small area, people pick up on that. And, uh, you know, having reviewed quite a few distros over the last year, um, it's been refreshing to see the amount. And I'm just, as an example, I'm going to throw out elementary OS. Mm hmm that level of attention to detail. That's what I'm talking about. And it, and it shows once you start digging in and you start opening things up and you go into various settings, uh, that's when you realize, okay, someone's really done their homework here. They didn't just, you know, grab a theme and, uh, you know, throw it on here. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the level that I've seen in the limited amount of time. So like I said, I want to spend more time digging through things, but it shows. Well, I'm not going to say there's not a couple foibles in there, uh, but uh, but we try to hide them well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll be honest, it's an open source OS. Hey, you think Windows doesn't have any problems? Do a quick search on, uh, on uh, I can't find my shared drive. Yeah. And check out those threads. That's exciting. Uh, uh, but, yeah, so we, we include a lot of stuff uh, that you won't see in a normal XSCB. Obviously, XSC 4.12 and Debian Stable is kind of a – I don't know that anybody's doing that right now but us. Um, not that anybody beside us nerdy folks would care a whole lot what the version number is. Um, you can't see my panel right now, but uh, I've, I've got, I've, I've got you know, Dropbox running. I've got a little USB amounter tool running that we wrote. You know, these are the little things that other distros don't have. I mean, anybody can throw the XFCE unmount plugin on the panel. But the panel plugins are big, right? I mean, does anybody really like those great big panel plugins? I do. Right. So you throw the smaller ones in the notification area and 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 you do it. Do what you do. It's we've 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 taken a lot of time. I'm glad some I'm glad people are noticing. It means a lot to us. Um, you know, during 14 we had like three reviews and you know, with the exception of uh, ah, whatever, I think he was Puppy Linux or Linux Help Guy or English Bob or whatever you want to call him, uh, Steve. Uh, you know, no one else was really excited about it, <laughs> and he was. And so we listened a lot to him. We're doing the same thing with the other reviewers. Uh, Dini Moto was really hard on us um, on our aesthetics. You know, we we focused on functionality and MX14. I'll be honest, if you, you want to have fun pull out a screenshot of MX-14 and put it up against MX-15 and 16. It, it is, I didn't think it was that bad when we released it. It's but ugly. Okay. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> uh, it was terrible. And 15 and 16 are so much better. 15 was good. 16 is even better. Um, so I'm glad people are looking. We paid a lot of attention to detail. We actually have, you know, we're not a boutique distro. This is a community that wanted an OS. Right. And we're trying to give it to them. And I'll tell you what, the Memphis guys, the, or now the MX community because we, we just rebranded. They're a hard bunch. I mean, if you don't have it right, 
they will let you know there is there isn't any well here's how i fixed it this is why did you release it this way you need you need to fix this and you need to fix it now <laughs> and we love that about them they're great but it's, they're, it's they're the great. little things that make up the distro you know we always will we'll talk about linux mint and, and things like that but it's the little things that they put into the distro that you don't really even notice until you notice it that make it a whole distro that is usable for everybody yeah. and that's what is in your distro where there's so much attention to detail that you don't really notice it until you start digging into all of the mx tools all of the little tweaks and that attention to detail is what makes it really awesome yeah well i appreciate that thank you for saying that we we, we uh that's been a goal <laughs> well if you spent any time back in the windows vista day is trying to switch to Linux and getting your Broadcom drivers to work, <laughs> then you totally 100% appreciate what you're doing. So, dude, I was compiling my Raylink drivers on Ubuntu 6.10. Man, that was <laughs> you want to talk about hard? That was ridiculous. Oh, well, this has been awesome, and uh, we look forward to. Uh, oh, I had one other question for you, yeah. uh, and I need to dig in myself on this. I, I guess I need to go read a little more. Uh, any plans for like KDE as a desktop or anything like that? I'm glad you mentioned this. Now we have a user, uh, Stevo, and actually he's on our dev team. He's one, he's our one of our lead packagers, um, and he's active on the Debian forum. So you'll see him over there too. Uh, uh, he has his own KDE spin, mm. uh, and it has not been updated for MX16. I expect it will after the dust settles uh, from 15. Um, uh, Lenny actually looked at it. Don't call me Lenny. Actually looked at it uh, a couple months ago because he was like, "Oh, they didn't even release this." Well, yeah, officially it's it's a spin. Okay, it's 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 but but in acknowledgement of the fact that the Mepis community, the original Mepis distribution was KDE based, uh, we do have a separate KDE. We call it MX modified. Okay, and it's uh, there's a KDE forum in there and all that. But I suspect he'll probably update that again. And if he doesn't, there is enough uh, interest in the community for it that somebody probably will. And what can they use to do that? Check out my latest video, MX Snapshot. Awesome. Which lets you take an installed system, customize, rewrap it up into an ISO with all the live goodness that you get on the original ISO. Awesome. You awesome. can awesome. make your own spin. And about, you know, it, I just ran it the other night. It took like 20 minutes to to run off my uh, custom ISO with all my uh, video and dev tools on it so that I could just stash it in the, in the safe in case the house burned down, you know. Because <laughs> that's what's well, important I, my live USB. <laughs> I'm thrilled to hear that, and, and uh, Rocco is as well, I'm sure, because we're both KDE fans, and, and if you've been watching what's going on with Plasma, I mean, every time you turn around, there's a new point release. You know, we're up to, what, 5.8? Point. Yeah, I mean they're really moving now. Uh, yeah. uh, pl plasma's uh, really, really moving. But you know our teams, our teams relatively small, and we focus. We have to be focused to produce the product that we produce, and Absolutely. that's when you get when you get into a, a group where they got twelve different spins. Unless you've got the people to back that up. If you do, great. If you don't have the people to back that up, you can really dilute your experience in a hurry doing that. Well, and I've experienced that. Uh, so you'll see, uh, you know, you'll see a release. And like you said, you've got community releases and things like that. And you may have, for example, I'll use Manjaro for, for an example. Uh, you may have a great experience with their XFCE proper. And then you jump over to KDE and realize it's not at the quality level because it didn't have the attention to detail and all the quirks weren't worked out. You know, that's, that's the thing. It's the quirks. It's the little itty bitty things that gnaw at you that, that can drive you nuts oh yeah you, you it, it just it's it's just the little things that that uh you know ubuntu calls them the paper cuts it's the thousand little things that are wrong that they try to you know they try to fix occasionally just try to squash them and that, with it, the amount of choice that linux has that's why people don't stick with distros if there's certain little things that are going to oh, get man. at you and they're just going to go and get another distro. It's no big deal because there's so much choice out there. That's why it uh, has to be right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, you know, if you got a thousand choices to choose from, you might as well find one that works for you out of the gate. Uh, of course, I well, want everybody, I want everybody to use MX Linux because, <laughs> I, you know, that's just how it is. But, um, 
but there's a well, lot I've of enjoyed, out there. I've enjoyed watching your videos because your enthusiasm shows up, you know, in your videos. And um, it's just nice to see, you know, that, hey, here's someone involved who's taking the time to kind of go through and step through some of these things. Uh, plus, you're enthusiastic about it, of course. And uh, so that's a fun combination as well. Now, you know, the, the community is a great bunch of guys and, you know, they've taught me what I know about Linux, uh, these guys. And originally the videos were my way of giving back to the community. Now I'm a little more involved with the dev stuff. But, uh, you know, back then I was just when I first started, I was just, a, you know, an enthusiastic user. And uh, it kind of took off from there. So, you well, know, this is a small awesome. channel when you're when you're not doing distro reviews, not a, not a whole lot of people come find you. But I tell you what, I've got you know, 80 more subscribers in the last two weeks. So I'm perfectly happy with that. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, Dolphin, man, thank you so much. Uh, I know you've got a million other things to probably got some Christmas shopping left to do if you're like us. Yeah, it's USB sticks for everybody. There you go. <laughs> with MX-16 installed. <laughs> OSS.com, people. Yeah, I was going to say on the uh, naughty list, I'm going to run out and buy uh, copies of Windows 10 for all the people on the uh, naughty list for a gift. That's like so. coal, yeah. <laughs> That's like the lumps of coal, exactly. Of coal. Oh my God, my dad. His Windows 10 just did this whatever update, big update, and it broke his antivirus, and mm. and he's just so mad about it. <laughs> and, he's, and he's and he's and I'm doing a I'm doing a video in his kitchen one day because I'm traveling. I was traveling. I was staying at the house, staying with him, and I'm doing a video at the kitchen table, and he's like, "What are you running over there?" Because that looks like it didn't break. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those are fun stories, aren't they? Oh, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate it. Look forward to uh, anything going on in the future, and we'll continue to watch your channel. So where do we find you on YouTube? At YouTube, I am uh, youtube.com slash run with the dolphin. Just look for the dolphin with the awesome. sneakers, and you got me. And uh, then, of course, the uh, mxlinux.org and uh, forum .it, forum, uh, antics.freeforums.org is where we hang out on the Antics boards. So come check us out. Awesome. Will do. Thanks a lot. Hey, guys, thanks for having me on. Peace. Thanks, Everybody. Dolphin. Merry Christmas, man. Thank you, guys. That leads us into our YouTube comments section, which we're going to discuss the results of the distro challenge. Do you have a drum roll sound effect? No, but I'll have one ready for you next week. Oh, man, you're killing me. Okay, <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, so for Pure Arch... We have five votes. Then we have a Arch Anywhere KDE for one vote. Then we have for Manjaro, and we'll tally these up. We have eight total votes for Manjaro, depending on which desktop environment. KDE, Deepin, Openbox, and XFCE. So eight votes for Manjaro. Rounding out the list, we have Antergos KDE with two. One for Antergos, regular, just any version uh, then we have one for SUSE then we have one for actually we have two for Arch i3WM hey. and uh, one for Zorin OS one for Xubuntu and one for Gecko KDE so what do you think wow, wow. so it sounds like uh, if you're just looking at the base OS Manjaro wins it looks that way Rob eight votes for Manjaro now well you could have done a lot worse you could have done a lot worse Manjaro's i could have not a bad yeah that's right so which desktop environment though because there's so many votes ah so well i've got something that's going to put us over the edge so our friend matt matt cross oh yeah did you say he was our friend <laughs> yes <laughs> yes he is matt's a friend yep and uh so you know matt proposed to us a little distro challenge in fact he released a video uh, this week and uh, kind of proposed a three person distro challenge. And uh, so he included you in that, and his vote for you was Manjaro Deepin. He was the one Manjaro Deepin, yes. That's right. <laughs> and so I'm going to help Matt out, and I'm going to kind of push it over the edge just a little bit. And I'm also going to throw in my vote for Manjaro Deepin. You're killing me, man. You are absolutely <laughs> killing me. <laughs> so, 
You, my friend, for the Distro Challenge, will be tasked with running Manjaro Deepin for one week. And I will say this, you could do a lot worse. I could. I could do a lot worse. But Such I as? could be, I could be, I don't know, maybe in your spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's, right. That's why I say you could do much worse because Matt challenged me to run Ubuntu proper or Ubuntu Unity because he knows how much I just love running Unity as a desktop environment. So I can just say this. Over the weekend, I'm going to be digging into every tweak and theme <laughs> and anything you can do to make Unity more usable. Just keep that PPA list I sent you handy because you're back to them already. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. I'm so glad this is only a week. Uh, it's only so, a week. And let's just let me just say that this is the last distro challenge that I'm going to take for a while, okay? Because I have to get back to stability here and sanity. So, <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. That's exactly right. So I'm with you on that. So this will be our last distro challenge for some time. Maybe we'll do another one much, much later in 2017. Who knows? But uh, for now, that's it. Now, back to the order of business with Matt's distro challenge. So. He did challenge us, so what's that mean, Rob? That means he's included in this. So it that does. means we've got a pick we've got a pick for him and I've got something in mind uh, that involves, you know, the time frame of oh about nineteen ninety eight or so. <laughs> I uh, love it. <laughs> so, so we're gonna see just how much Matt wants to come through with this challenge because you know, basically it's if he decides to accept it from this point on, right? Yep, he's got to accept the challenge, or I ain't installing deep in. I'm just saying. That's right. That's right. So here's what I'm I'm going to throw out. It's on the table right now. I'm throwing it out. It's out there for everybody to see. What is for it? For everybody to see. Now, before I before I announce it, Matt, your challenge is in the top twenty of Distro Watch, my friend. It could do a so lot worse. We're not going, absolutely, we're not going. You know, down to number forty seven or fifty three or anything like that. So for you, Matt. The challenge is React OS. Yes, I love it. <laughs> we needed a drum roll. We needed a drum roll for Christ. Yes, we did. <laughs> so React OS for Matt if you decide to accept the challenge. So we'll just see. Uh, we'll hear back from Matt, I'm sure. Oh, uh, I'm sure we'll he... hear. <laughs> That's right. So we'll see how it goes. And I think it would be fun. If, uh, you know, here we are at the holidays, so I'm sh you're probably taking some time away from YouTube and your channel, and I'll probably do the same. But it would be fun if somewhere maybe along the way in the middle of the week or something like that, we could release a video just kind of sharing a little update about how things are going. And I kind of have an idea what you'll talk about with the Deepin desktop, and I figure you'll kind of know what I'm talking about with the Ubuntu desktop. But what I really look forward to seeing is Matt's video. <laughs> yes, I love it. So, I think it's awesome. So uh, therein lies the challenge. It's it's back in. Uh, we've thrown the ball back over to Matt. So it's up to him. There you go. So that wraps up the YouTube comments. And so, Rob, what's going on over at your channel? Well, uh, I don't know if you caught this or not. I've got a new Linux tools, cool Linux tools episode up, and it's one that you may want to check out, and it's called Vocal. Uh, have you seen that video? No, I haven't seen the video. So what's Vocal? Okay. Well, Vocal is a podcast app for the Linux desktop. Nice. So here's what's cool about it. It is developed by the same team who is working on elementary OS. Which means that it'll probably look good. It looks good. Clean, simple interface. Um, it's got one drawback, and uh, you'll see I mentioned this in the video. You cannot do a search to add your podcast. You actually have to add an RSS feed, or you can do an import from a, uh, a file where you have done an export from, say, iTunes or Gpotter, um, you know, or an RSS feed. But beyond that, clean, simple interface. I think you'd like it. You can select to automatically update the podcast. So, of course, I put Destination Linux in there as the first <laughs> podcast. So as we release uh, new episodes, that will automatically up, update and download. You can choose to automatically download as well. So uh, got that posted. You may want to check that out. And then, uh, of course, based on our 
discussion here with Dolphin, uh, I uh, intend to do a thorough review of MX-16. So what you got going on? Well, I haven't been doing a whole lot on the channel because of being in the GNOME world. And I got to say that I don't, you know, like the more I use GNOME, the more, the, the less I hate it. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so, I mean, no, is it something for uh, me to use all the time? No, probably not because I need certain things. But I, when I do switch, I am going to miss certain things about GNOME and especially the full screen launcher. I have tried to train myself to not use the extensions as far as the menus to make it look like other distributions. I've been training myself to use the, uh, well, I do use the keyboard a lot. So hitting the Windows key. Um, super I hit the, key, my friend. Super yeah. key. <laughs> super key. <laughs> uh, and opening the full screen launcher. So that I will miss. Uh, but it's been it's been a good experience overall. So I haven't done a whole lot on the channel itself, but I will be posting the next video about Manjaro Deepen. Manjaro Deepen. Interesting. That'll be fun. Yeah. Well, listen, I hope you have an awesome Christmas. This is going to wrap up Episode 2 of Destination Linux. And so to all of our viewers and, and uh, you know fans of our channels and things like that and friends, I uh, wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and a safe and uh, Happy New Year as well. Yep. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks. Check you later. See you, man. Now, if you're running out of time, dude, stop it. I'm, I'm playing with you. <laughs> I know you are. Stop it. <laughs> You're such a loser. <laughs> okay, um, if you're running out of time, man, we can do this tomorrow morning or, or something. That's up to you. Well, no, I think, uh, let me just, because it didn't take us but 15 minutes.